Okay, so this week we're going to switch from all kinds of triangles and parallel lines over to another shape from geometry, the circle. And I know you've done circles since you were a toddler, um, but, you know, things change as you get older and you learn a little bit more. Uh, so let's talk about what you might already know, right? Um, hopefully you already know that this is a circle. <laughs> no, um, hopefully you already know that uh, there is a center to the circle and that every point on the outside is equidistant to the center and if you were to connect the center to any point on the outside that that is called the radius. I'm gonna label it an R but over here we'll make a little key. I think you already know that though. Uh, do you remember what it's called if you shoot all the way across? You have to cut through the middle but if you shoot all the way across um, that is actually called the D for diameter and diameter. I think I spelled that right. Okay, and then what other things do you remember? Well, um, okay, maybe you remember that if you go all the way around the circle, we that um, that is called the circumference, or you might remember how many angles are in a circle. Um, some people remember that if you're around the middle and you travel all the way around, there's 360 degrees in a circle. And if you're on the outside, what did I say? That was the circumference. Um, it's the it's funny because it's the only shape where we don't call that the perimeter. Usually when we go around an object, we call it perimeter. But for some reason, on a circle, we have to say circumference. But, you know, it's still the perimeter. It's just the vocab word for perimeter. Okay. And uh, what else? Maybe you remember arc length. Um but maybe you don't. So I actually have a box allocated below for arc length. So let's jump down here and actually start filling in some of this fun stuff. Okay, so when you get to geometry, you're going to do more than just circumference or area. But uh, just as a refresher, the formulas for circumference and area. Circumference is 2 pi r. The other way that it's written is sometimes just pi d, so pi times diameter. And then area, you probably remember, is pi r squared. Now, if you didn't remember these formulas, I highly recommend you go ahead and just memorize these because um, you're going to use them like forever, even outside of school, and that's kind of good to know. Now, um, the pi, um, there, here's the deal. With, with pi, you can, there is a button on your calculator um, if you have a fancy calculator, and it will take pi out to like 9 or 10 decimal places. Um, but most people kind of round pi to 1.34 or something like that. So keep in mind that if you're working with a phone calculator, you may just want to type it in like that, okay? But, um, but it's really not bad. So like if you have a circle and I say, okay, well the radius of this is 3 then you literally are just taking a radius of 3 and plugging it in here. Okay, so 2 times pi times 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. I'm kind of doing it out of order, but that's just because I can't do pi in my head. Um, 2 times 3 would be 6, so, so circumference would be 2 times 3 times pi, or 6 pi, and I actually prefer to leave my answer with just the pi at the back. Um, some teachers will let you pull out a calculator and do like a decimal approximation. And so if your teacher lets you do that, then type in 6 times pi or 6 times 3.14 if you want. Now, I don't have a calculator, so I'm not going to actually type that in, okay? But you could um, if you wanted and give um, a decimal instead. But this is a great answer. Um, and then for area, if we wanted to do area, then I'm just plugging in a 3 there. So what is 3 squared? Well, 3 squared is 9, so the answer is just 9 pi, and we're just going to leave it like that. Okay, now arc length might be something new. Arc length is whenever you're looking at just a small piece of the circumference. So like let's say I took my pen and I'm like, okay, um, I want you to find out how long this piece is from here to here. That would be the arc length. Now I'm going to connect this end of the arc 
to this end of the arc because whenever you're doing a problem like this for arc length, you, um, since it's just a piece of the circumference, you actually have to do a proportion, okay? And when you do the proportion, the idea is that you're doing the arc length over the entire circumference and you're setting that equal to the angle that's on the inside. So if somebody doesn't tell you the angle right here, it's going to be really hard to find the arc length, okay? But it's going to be the angle over 360. And now why 360? Well, this is a proportion. So remember with a proportion you're doing part over whole, part over whole. So in this case, part of the outside over the total outside and then part of the angle over the entire circles angle and the whole circle all the way around is 360. So this is your proportion to where if I told you okay the radius is 5 and this is the angle 15 degrees. So if I told you those two pieces of information then what you would do is put arc length which you know this is what we don't know I'll call that X x over, now you do circumference down here. So the circumference is this formula back here. So 2 times pi times, what's my r? 5 is equal to, now you take the angle that's like the piece that they gave you, so 15 degrees is the little piece, over the entire circle, which is 360. So notice this is always going to be a 360, and you're just plugging in values for these other three. Um, and then you do a proportion from algebra. And with a proportion, if you don't remember, you just cross multiply. So we're going to do 360 times x is equal to 15 times 2 times pi times 5. Now I'm going to write that as... Two, What's 2 times 5? 10. I'm going to write that as 10 pi. Like I told you a second ago, I actually don't have a calculator. And so now what I'm going to do is to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 360. And then I'm going to just take my answer for arc length right here and um, try to simplify this if I can. Okay, now this is going to be 150 pi over 360. And then your job is just to reduce this fraction, guys. Okay, so if I reduce the fraction, it looks like 10 will go into the top and 10 will go into the bottom. So 10 goes into the top 15 times, 10 goes into the bottom 36 times. Now does 15 over 36 reduce? I think it does. I think it's divisible by 3. So this will be 5 pi over 12. So that would be my answer for arc length. Notice I'm working the whole problem and pi, even though it's a number and it's a decimal, I just keep rewriting the pi as I go. Um, I'm not actually typing anything in the calculator there. Okay, so hopefully that's not freaking you out. Now, the next section is jumping from arc length over to area of a circle. Okay, or area of a sector, my bad. So kind of like here, if arc length has to do with the outside, if we're doing an area of a sector, so I'm going to try to draw the same thing here, we don't care about the outside as much anymore. We actually care about everything on the inside. So it's like area of a piece of pie almost. Um, on arc length, we're comparing this to circumference because it's only the outside of the circle. But on a sector, since it has to do with the inside of the circle, we're going to compare the area of the sector to the area of the whole circle. Okay. So it's the same idea as this, except now since we're shading, we're doing area instead of circumference. Over here, same exact thing. It's whatever the little angle is on the inside over 360. Okay, so let's just pretend it's like the same thing as over here. This is a 5, and on the inside, that's an angle of 15 degrees. I know you can't see it because I colored it in, but that's okay. So um, that's really 15, and that's really 5, and now let's work this problem out. If somebody said, what's the area of the sector, we would say, we don't know. So we'd call it an X, and then on the bottom, I need to do area of the whole circle. Well, what's area of a circle? Well, over here, area of a circle is pi r squared. 
So I'm going to do pi r squared equals the same thing as before, 15 over 360. Okay, so now what? Well, same as before, cross multiply. This is going to be 5 times 5 is 25 pi. Okay, so let's go this way first. It's easier. Okay, 360 times x is 360x equals, now I do these two times each other, 25 pi times 15. Yikes. I don't know 25 times 15. Um, let me work that out over here. 5, 2, 12, 5, 2... 375, okay, so 375 pi. So that's the math from doing 5 times 5 times 15. You get that number and then bring over the pi. Now I need x by itself, so divide by 360, divide by 360, and then you're just going to reduce this fraction. Now I know 5 goes into both of these, so that's what I'm going to try to do to, to break down that fraction. Let me see, 5 will go into 37 7 times with a remainder of 2, so that should work. And then 5 goes into 360. 5 goes into 35. That's another 72. Okay. This is what I'm getting is 75 pi. Oops, I don't need that. Over 72. Now, if those two break down, then I don't know what they break down to. Um, oh, yes, I do. I think 3 goes into both again. So 25 pi over 3 goes into there twice, 24. Okay, that would be the final answer there. So it's a big lesson, guys, in algebra. This is all that this is. It's algebra. You set up a proportion, you cross-multiply, and then you have to remember how to reduce fractions. So, um, you know, if you would like, go ahead and pause the video and go try the ones on the practice section. Because um, this, this video is kind of broken into two different parts. This is part one where it's area, circumference, um, area of a sector, and arc length, okay? And then part two is going to be some rules for when, yeah, this stuff. And this is stuff that you might not have, you might not have ever seen, like, these words before and you're going to be like um what what is that so uh, feel free to hit pause go work on that video and then come back when you're ready for part two okay if you're back it means you're ready to rock um for part two of this so the first thing that i want to do is just some vocab here okay um chords tangents and secants um these are just different things that can be drawn on a circle now um a tangent tangents are, are hard to draw okay a tangent is going to be a line that touches in exactly one spot Now, it doesn't have to be a circle. Like, there's a lot of things that have tangents. Um, you could take any picture and, and draw a line on it that only touches in one place, and it would technically be a tangent. But on a circle, it's a little easier to see. So uh, go to any point you want. So any point, it's got to be on the outside of the circle if you only want to touch once. So let's say you're here, okay? So I need to draw a line through this point, but it only can touch this point. So don't go like this way, because then you'd be touching like a lot of points on the inside. So uh, you'd be touching over here. You, you don't want to go like that, or you'll end up touching over here. So it's kind of like, it's like it barely skims the, the picture. Kind of like that. So like this would be the tangent, okay? Now, chords and secants, those are going to be lines that can go through the circle. And the difference is um, a chord doesn't, the, a chord is a segment, okay? It's a segment through the circle that touches in two places. I'll just put two spots, but it could be like two points, or I'm sure you'll get a very technical definition from whichever teacher you have next year. Um, this is just your intro, so I'm trying to use um, like normal English and not math language, okay? All right, so a uh, secant, it's going to be a segment through the circle that touches two spots. So really just draw, you know, anywhere you want. Let's say I'm like, you're like, oh, here's a spot and here's a spot over here. So just draw a segment between those two 
Woohoo! And and that's a segment. Um, the way that this is labeled, uh, if you call that A and that B, you would write it as segment AB. So you write like a little, um, that's whatever you drew, you, you write that exactly over it. Okay. Um, now a secant, okay, a secant is very similar to a chord. Okay. It's the same as the chord, except you keep going. It's except it's a line. Same as chord but it's a line and what this indicates is that um, you know it keeps going so like let's say I'm gonna put C over here and let's say I want to go through A and C so it look like that so it's just it goes through two spots but it keeps going so it's like a line and so for a secant the notation for this would be like AC and you would draw a line over it instead of a little segment bar over it. So this is notation for this, this is notation for this, okay? All right, cool. Now, what are we gonna do with this information? Well, you're gonna have to know this vocab because you're going to start getting some definitions about some things that are true, um, things that are true about a circle. And um, one of the first things that I would like to talk about Okay, one of the first things I would like to talk about is the measurement of the arc versus the measurement of the angles on the inside. So uh, this whole thing is when I see this, I need to think this. So I'm going to draw a picture so that we can describe our picture and then what the approach is going to be. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a central angle. It's called a central angle if you know that it's at the center of the circle. And here's what's really cool about this, okay? Um, if this is an A and this is a B, if somebody asks you what is the measure, remember a little M in geometry just kind of means measure. What is the measure of arc AB? This is how it would be written, okay? And you know that it's in the center, okay? Um, so if you need that, what's cool about this is that it is equal to whatever the angle is on the inside. It actually equals the central angle. So that's just a little side note. So if you see something chilling in the middle and, and they're like, oh, that's a 48, then you know that the measure of AB, the measure of the outside of the circle, is also 48. So this matches this. Okay, if it's in the center like that. Now, what if, okay, what if um, it's not a central angle and then you're looking on the outside, okay? Well, if that happens, um, there's another rule that you can use and it looks kind of like this. So I'm gonna do red for this one. Um, let's pretend that we still have A and we still have B, but it goes all the way to the opposite side of the circle and it touches the edge, okay? So it's one of those things where it's, it's a kind of a cool relationship. We already know that this is 48, right? Because we did it right here, okay? So we know that this is 48. What ends up happening here is that the angle, if it's touching the opposite side, this is actually equal to half so this angle, angle is half of the arc, half of the measure of AB. Okay, so whatever arc is across from it, if that's a 48, then I know what's half of 48, I think it's 24. So in this problem, it would be 24 degrees. So when you see an angle touching the side, oops, angle touching the side, then you need to think that the opposite arc is twice the measure. Opposite arc is twice the measure. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much it. If you see an angle touching the side, then the opposite arc is twice the measure. I wrote it here as this one is half of this, but those are the same thing, right? This angle being half of the arc 
is the same as the arc being twice as much as the angle. So I've written it two ways so that, you know, it can help you. And if this writing doesn't help you down here, if you're like, oh, that just confuses me, lady. Okay, then guess what? Just use the picture and look at it and go, oh, here they matched. But on the red one, this one was half as much. Okay, cool. So the next rule um, about circles and the measure of things, um, it looks like this. Um, if you ever see two lines intersecting, so when you see two lines or segments intersect inside the circle, then what you need to think is the following. The angle on the inside, either this one or this one, these are both the same because they're vertical angles, but this angle is the average of the two intersected arcs. Angle is the average we'll remember how to average in a second, of the two um, arcs intercepted. So let me show you what this means with numbers in case the writing confuses you, okay? So what this would mean is like if we know that the measure of this is 30 and then we know that the measure of this is 50, like somebody's already given us this information, and then they say, hey, find angle A. Well, the way we'd find A is we average these two sides. So how do you average two numbers? Well, you add them and divide by two. So that's how you average, remember, from way back when. So what is, let's see, the average would be 50 plus 30 divided by 2. So 80 divided by 2 or 40. So the angle on the inside would be 40 degrees, and that is how it's done. So it's pretty cool. All right, the last thing is um, what if you have, like everything we've done so far is when you've stayed inside the circle, right? We've got a central angle. We've got another angle inside. We've got two that intersect inside. So this last one has to do with what happens whenever you have stuff outside the circle, okay? So here's what this would look like. It might be something like we might be studying an angle on the outside, Okay, so we'll call that angle A again. Okay, so when I see this, so basically when I see angle on the outside, I need to think, um, I'm going to have to do this as a formula, <laughs> because this one, it's not an average, it's almost the opposite of an average, okay? Um, what you have to do is you have to take this arc, the intercepted arc, and you have to subtract whatever this one is, and then you divide by two, okay? So it's the bigger arc, bigger arc minus baby arc divided by two. I don't know why I don't know how to spell arc. There we go, A-R-C. Okay, so the bigger arc minus the baby arc divided by two. So let me give you some numbers here to show you what I'm talking about. So let's say that you know that that's 100, and then you know that this is 20 right here, and somebody's asking you for angle A. Then angle A would be equal to 100, the bigger arc, minus the baby arc of 20 divided by two. So in this case, it would be 40 again, okay? So this is going to be like just comparing what's on your practice to which of these three or four pictures makes the most sense. This is four technically because that central angle is different than this one. But if it looks like one of these four situations, come back to these rules, come back to these numeric examples, and that's going to help you actually like solve the homework problems. Now, sometimes it's a puzzle, okay? And um, if it's a puzzle, you really got to think a little bit. And, and what I mean by that is, let's say that they did not give you this piece right here, 
but instead they told you that that was a hundred and that this was a hundred and that this was a hundred or ninety. Okay, if they told you this piece, this piece, and this piece, and you're looking for what's left over, remember that all the way around a circle is 360. So sometimes you have to go, okay, wait, the whole thing's 360. So you would have to figure out what is a hundred with a hundred with 90. Well, that's 290. You'd have to actually subtract that. And then once you subtract it, you would fill in your own, like in this case, it would be 70. Then once you fill it out, you would do bigger minus smaller divided by two. So this one would be 100 minus 70 is 30. 30 divided by two is 15. So that's how that works. So just kind of be careful. Um, you may just have to piece it together. Um, let's see how it goes and come back after you've tried as many as you can do. Hopefully circles don't kill you, but I mean, honestly, for some people, this is way harder than triangles. So we'll just have to see which kind of person you are. Good luck.